Hey everyone. All right, so we've made it past all inspections and today is drywall day. So I'm gonna pause this video several times. I wanna show everyone a few things that we do, right or wrong, that I like to do when I build just to get a better product to the consumer. And I'm gonna start right here. These little devices right here, these are called hurricane ties. <laughs> it's like a dollar for each one of these. This ties the house to the structure of the roof. Now, from memory, I could be wrong. It's either every third one or every other one you're supposed to put one of these in. If you look around, I put hurricane ties on every single one. Why? That last tornado that came through, the houses that survived had these on it. The roofs were still intact. Now, they were warped and twisted, but the homes I worked on had the hurricane ties. So we use them on every single one for that reason. It just really works and it helps hold that roof on in a high wind situation. All right, now I'm gonna pause and move to the garage. Okay, now I'm in the garage area and codes require, this is the garage ceilings, right? Codes require, in case there's a car fire, that I have to have 5 8 drywall on the ceilings. And then by code, I'm to use half inch on the walls. I don't do that. I do five eighths on the ceiling and any wall that goes into the house, I also use five eighths. Let's get a little extra protection. It doesn't cost, I guess, 200 extra dollars in the build to go with the thicker drywall. That's it. Then also, this is the main LVO beam that goes over the garage door. That's oversized. You, if you watch this video, you know somebody, you've seen somebody, where this sags over about five years, I guess what's called a smile. And it's one of my pet peeves, so I always oversize this so that doesn't happen. All right, I wanna pause again. The engineer that designed the lumber package for this house said that all these structures, this, this is the supporting structure for this row of doors. Well, he sent us two by 12s laminated together. And I chose not to do that. I talked with the client and we spent an extra $7,000 to do LVL systems. The reason is, if this ever sags, it can pinch the doors. And with modern lumber, it's just not as strong as it used to be. So I wanna over frame stuff like this because this is what counts five, 10 years down the road that these doors still open and close correctly. And this hasn't moved and start cracking drywall and things of that nature. All right, we're gonna pause again. Here's another look at this front door, mahogany. Coming straight up, this is a seated glass. How pretty is that? And look at the view out the front door, huh? That's amazing. All right, pausing again. Okay, now we're upstairs in the weight room again. And this will give you a scale since they're drywalling. You see how big the recessed area, this is just a cavity we took advantage of. This is the weight room where the TV goes. And then, we do a thing called drops. Most of your can lighting systems always gets changed midstream. So instead of roughing those in for the drywall or cut around, we do what's called a loop and we drywall over it and then we cut these out when it's time for the electrician to just trim out. It just works better for everybody. And again, this is a storage area and because it's spray foam and the inspector is convinced that this is going to be a fire hazard, they, we have to drywall it. Um, I disagree with some of the language, but we do what they want, right? All right, pause again. Okay, resuming again, you'll see here and there, you see this two by four? It's been cut, and then you're gonna see another two by four here to back it up. What happens is, is when you build, and this is from the olden days, and it's just got worse because the wood's not as good as it used to be. This stud can have a bow in it. So when we frame, I asked the framer to pull a string across the wall and any of these bowed, instead of replacing them, we cut them, put it back in the position and then put another two by four on and then we have perfectly straight walls that keeps that wall nice and straight. If you don't do that, you want, that's the homes you see that has big bows in the wall when you look down a hallway. Um, and then looking back up into here, you see all that insulation. Look how good that is. And this is another thing that is so neat is this 
that attic will always be almost the same te temperature of the house and the electric bill goes down. That's what's really neat about this. And I want to show you one more thing. I'll keep rolling for this. There's our closet. And then we come through here. And then here, you see the yellow paint? This is what I use to tell the drywallers to stop. And from here, we do hardy backer because all of these are shower systems. And then I'll show you the drywallers going fast. Here's one of the guys, hard at it. And here's the guys on the stilts doing the ceiling. You can watch the speed. I think he's done this once or twice, folks. What do you think? They're moving. All right, I think that's it. And the next video will be is once we start installing trim. There's all of our windows again. I can't put drywall in the fireplace chases. I don't have the fireplaces yet. And the inspector is nice enough to let me drywall everything except for the fireplace chases that I will have him come out and re-inspect when I install those. And I think that's pretty much it. We are... This is what we call getting over the hump. Once the drywall goes up, now it's trim time. Floors, baseboard, door trim, cabinets. Um, and get this thing done as fast as we can with a top-notch quality and get this customer moved into their new home. They're gonna live here forever. That's it, guys. We'll see you on the next one.